Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're taking a look at a hunk of aluminum from Mons Geek. Today we're looking at the Mons Geek M2, the 1800, their second release and um, if it's anything like the Mons Geek M1, I think that we're going to be happy by the end of this video. Mons Geek is a sister company to Akko. Um, they appear to be the studio that was behind the mod series, so probably that was Akko dipping their toes in to see, you know, how popular it was, and apparently it was pretty popular. So they've now been releasing, and they have quite a slate of keyboards uh, planned, but for the international market, their, their keyboards are QMK via compatible right out of the gate, so that is a positive. Now, just to disclose, Mons Geek did send me this unit in exchange for my honest review, and that's what we'll be doing today. We're taking a look at what I believe is the silver um, version of their 1800 aluminum kit. So let's go ahead and open this up because I am excited to get in here. So we got our tape, and this is for the tape mod. Um, I actually used it, I think, on my first build on the M1, but then I took it off when I replaced the plate. I'm going to set this aside. Uh, we have a packet of, looks like some foam feet or gaskets, and those are the backings for um, screw and stabilizers. So here's the M2 user manual QMK. All right, set that aside. Oh, nice. Oh, wait a minute. They actually do include stabilizers. And we have our bag of tools with an Allen wrench and some extra screws and it appears to be one extra or no two extra case screws and a lovely cable yeah i believe the other one came with one as well um, this is the silver kit it looks almost white so the cable matches quite nicely and they get it does come with a nice sturdy dust cover which um, i'm seeing more manufacturers include and i do appreciate that and here we are, the Mons Geek M2 1800. Now, I mean, off the bat, this is a lovely hunk of aluminum, but I was kind of expecting it. I, I was not let down with the Mons Geek M1. Um, actually, I still have another plate to test on that. I gotta remember, I keep pushing that. I wanted to get to this one because I've been actually using 1800s quite regularly lately, and I've just kind of gotten used to it. So I'm looking forward to test driving this one and reporting back. So as we can see, we have very similar design language. We have that in the, that port that's a little bit uh, in there further than I'd like it to be, but hmm, I don't know. I mean, perhaps there could be a reason. The, uh, the finish on this is super smooth. Let's take a look at the bottom. We have the Mons Geek badge, their logo, the model, the case screws that we're going to have to get to in order to open her up. But yeah, the lines on this, oh yeah, that gold piece in there. Now, I think I read somewhere they're going to be doing different inserts or selling different inserts for different colors. But I've actually thought of just um, taking the measurements and printing me up some different colored ones and put them in there. But I don't know if it would clash too much between PLA or ABS plastic and the this lovely finish. I mean, I don't see a single mar on here. This is this is a lovely, lovely hunk of aluminum. It's well, well made, that's for sure. And I love that. I mean, this is rare that you actually see through lights for or through holes for the lights. I don't know, but this is yeah. I'm I'm digging this. Let's go ahead and get started. Open it up. this out of the way. Grab it with both hands so nothing falls off. All right, take the top frame off. Oh, 
All right, so one thing I wanted to note here on the M1, um, I I know I had to, and I saw others that had to. They basically had to do a force brake mod on this side piece, but because they literally just rattled inside of there, the tolerances weren't good. But now it appears that the tolerances are so tight, it's it's going to take a little bit of force to even pull it out. So good on you, Mons Geek making revisions and revisions that matter that quickly that's good to see now here we have the plate and the pcb assembly and we probably have a daughter board here so i want to be real careful as we pull this up all right let's disconnect the jst connector now that's how a jst connector is supposed to work All right, so we see that we have a sheet of like clear plastic and then two different foams for below. And we also have a foam between the plate and the PCB assembly. So now we're gonna have to take this apart because we need to install the stabilizers. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this and this. Oh, put that right there. So I'm going to set it aside. All right, now that we got that hunk of metal out of the way, let's go ahead and... All right. I guess I will need to unplug my screwdriver for a second, and I will need a smaller Phillips. All right, we got, looks like, six screws, none in the center. All right. Now we can go ahead and take this apart. First, I'll take a look at the stock plate, which is a polycarbonate plate. Oh, we got several layers here. So we have uh, the sock gasket, which is honestly preferable to me in many cases, as opposed to um, the uh, foam strips with the adhesive sure there's a few people out there that agree with me so we have on top of the PCB we have an IPXC sheet and then we have oh, the lovely PCB there's the LED indicator lights we have the south facing five pin compatible all right and this one looks like it was built in the second to last week of the of last year so it's a fairly new one Nice clean PCB. Oh, I like how they have uh, actually circled out where the stabilizers go. Very nice. Go ahead and build our stabilizers. I know I thought that this one didn't come with stabilizers, but I've kind of built maybe one or more keyboards that I could keep track of, and I sometimes get them confused in my head. All right, so these uh, the stabilizer feet obviously do not need any clipping as they are flat. So go ahead and set these up. All right, we got those housings put together. I'm just gonna go ahead and put the stabilizer pads down. All right, we've got those pads on there, so let's go ahead and put these stabilizers together. So for these, I'm going to be lubing them unconventionally, like I tend to do with my 80-20 mix of Super Lube. Just go on the stem, and then use it to go all up and down 
Make sure to get past the elbow. Make sure it's spread as much as it can be. And then to assemble it. These are quite smooth. I like them. I mean, they're they're literally almost like silk. <laughs> they might actually work without lube, but I'm just not going to take a chance. All right, it looks like we've got the stabilizers built. All right, so before installing the stabilizers, we want to decide if we're going to use the IPXC pad. Now, this there's PE pads and IPXC pads, and I believe EVA pads as well, but when they come in a sheet like this, now this is just my uh, own experience, that they seem to be more of a muting agent. They seem to quiet down um, any resonance the spring may have. But when you use individual pads or a PE foam sheet, like from packing of a keyboard, it seems to add more of a pop. Now, I actually do perform do prefer more of a pop but since this is what comes stock with this I'm gonna go ahead and install the stock um, possibly when I come back to do a mod on this keyboard then I'll remove it and replace it with a PE foam sheet uh, or might have to be one and a half since it's a bigger bigger boy but so yeah so for stock we're gonna go ahead and leave this in there but if experience with the M1 is anything to go by it should still sound just fine so let's go ahead and install the stabilizers. Again, the clips always go towards or inside of the bigger holes. I'm going to go ahead and clip these in. So yeah, you should, for the most part with stabilizers, when you're doing these screw-in stabilizers, when they're fully popped into their holes, because you have the, the clip that goes into the bigger hole, a little bit of an angle, and then you should push and pop the, uh, the screw nut into the PCB plate hole to where it's basically sitting there nice and firm. And with these sometimes you can get a bit of bunching. So it's it's a little bit of a job to get everything lined up just right but it can be done. Pushing these in yet I just want to try to get them on at least certain Oh, these won't matter over here. All right. I think we're good. Just make sure that we're not bunching up over here or over here. We don't want to interfere with the uh, holes where the switches go in. Looks to be well lined up. I'll flip this over. I'm going to drop these screws in place. All right, once they're all screwed in, we want to make sure that they're all nice and flush with the PCB because even the slightest amount of lift will mean either noisy or completely non-functioning stabilizers. All right, so these all appear to be nice and flush against the PCB. All right, so now that we've uh, made sure that we've got the pad on here well, um, and that the stock or the stabilizers are nice and flush with the PCB. We're going to go ahead and attach the plate back on. And this should just sit nicely above. And I've got the, the foam on in here as well that goes between the PCB and the plate. All right, that seems about right. I believe we had one, two. Six. All right, we got six of those. Those are these to be the same screws as the stabilizer screws. All right, let's get this one. All right. So now we've got the plate and the PCB assembly. Just double checking on these stabs. Everything looks good. What's covered up needs to be covered up, and what's not is not. 
All right. So next on our little journey here is switches. Now, I was going to use Akko switches. Unfortunately, any of the Akkos that I have, that I have over uh, 90 of, well, which we're going to need for this, um, are already loaded in boards. So rather than going and taking the switches out of a board, I'm just going to go with some switches that I already have um, that I've already pre-lubed. They were for another build, but it's fine with this one because I've got at least 300 of these. These are um, kale box cream. And yeah, they've been uh, lightly lubricated. Now these are going to block a lot of the RGB. Not all of it, but a lot of it. But I think we'll be fine as we want to see what this keyboard sounds like more than anything. So supporting the back of the PCB or the hot swap sockets. This is in my opinion, the best way to install switches. All right, so let's go ahead and load up this board. And here we are, the assembled plate PCB assembly with kale creams. Now I had some of them that weren't lubed that made it into my lube container. That's why I had to cherry pick which ones were going on. All right, so now, it's time to do the force brake mod. And then from there, we're gonna build this puppy. All right, nice and easy it is. Uh, one thing that I've learned when dealing with aluminum, you want to be very careful. These finishes, though nice, they are a bit fragile. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna flip this. All right, we know what screws these are, so we'll just go ahead and put them all together. So now, what I want to do, I've got one of these little guys that didn't want to stick right. So basically, I think we can do this. We want to get these right next to where the screws, screw holes are, because we're going to be doing what's called the force brake mod. All right, I've got the bottom frame. I'm going to go ahead and leave the top frame the same way and orient these the opposite way so maybe there'll be a little overlap there all right so there's the force break mod we still got a couple extras this should be fine like I said we're doing stock today I'll probably end up coming back at some other point um, if this doesn't work as much as I'd like it to then I'll go ahead and replace them with uh, with something else all right so at this point it looks like we're ready to reassemble I'm going to put this frame over here. I'm going to go ahead and pull this closer to me. And since we're going stock, yes, I'm not using the tape, but everything else I'm going to be going with. So leave this in place. And then we want to connect this JST connector. Nice and safe in there. Make sure it's not pinching over here. No, oh, it's nice and low. Make sure these socks go into the gasket here. So we can see that flex that we have just naturally. Obviously, some of that foam is preventing more flux. All right, everything seems to fit there. Now let's make sure this fits on just fine. Do you have a little tension because of the uh, the gaskets and now everything is full so try not to tighten it all the way yet just want to make sure it's got a good grip all right so for today's build i ordered up some octo keycaps that i've been wanting to take a look at this is the um mda profile pbt double shop white on black building block they also have black on white building block so i can see how to go with the white on black i kind of like it a little bit more oh, this is a shrink wrap what is this all right this is kind of silly but whatever so let's see what we've got here. Now, I've been a fan of Octo's keycaps for a minute. Um, I did not like the salves. 
All right, so we've got PBT and double shot keycaps that are zero. What do we got for thickness? 1.5, right on the dot. All right, that's that's a good measurement in my opinion. That makes for a decent keycap. All right. So now, because these have different trays. Basically, we've got a white on black set, though we've got one more layer of, I guess you could call it novelty. Well, they're colorful, I'll give them that, and there's definitely plenty of novelties. It appears for just about every row, but I don't know if we're going to be using those just now. Let me go ahead. I'm just going to load up the white on blacks. I mean, I thought there was going to be a little bit more to it, like, I don't know, I guess from the and I didn't think it was just going to be a random tray of uh, novelties. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick with the tried and true. So I'm going to go ahead and load these up and I'll be right back. And here we are, the Monsgeek M2-1800. I've got to say, not only is it a solid piece of aluminum, it is a lovely kit. Um, I think that those stabilizer pads that we use are more than sufficient. I don't hear any sign. Yeah, there's no ping. I can hear um, the strikes, but... There's no reverberation. So, now that said, I've got some ideas for mods that I want to do, but I've got to go back to the mods geek one first, M1, before I do that. So, let's go ahead and now that we have it assembled, let's plug it in and see what we've got. Oh, very nice. So, because of that polycarbonate plate and some decent LEDs, we can see that you know we have the shine through on the sides of the keycaps, which honestly, to me, that's just much more inviting. Now, these um, MDAs, I wasn't sure because I've had I have MSA uh, profiles. Do, no, I don't think I have an MDA profile. I do not think that I do, but I've got to say, I like this. I wasn't sure. Um, but these are some nice keys. I only used one because they don't have Linux. So I'm the bear. My bear is the super key. Anyway, um, yeah, this is uh, it's looking nice. Let's get technical. Today we are taking a look at the Monsgeek M2, an 1800 wired aluminum CNC keyboard. Stock this keyboard comes weighing in at 2,072 grams. It is a gasket mount, south facing, screw and stabilizer, and PC plate keyboard. It does come with QMK via out of the box as well as NKRO. The PCB measures 1.6 millimeters in width. The MSRP on this keyboard is $109.99 or $115.99 if you choose the purple one. The chin of this keyboard sits at 24 millimeters, while the back sits at 35 millimeters, providing an angle of six degrees. So anyway, today we took a look at the Mons Geek M2-1800, an aluminum CNC keyboard that QMK via out of the box. Um, I, uh, I really can't say enough about this keyboard. It really not only does it hit a sweet spot, 
it is so solidly built and this is stock i mean they included the gasket so we did the the force break i think that's going to be enough i thought maybe i'd have to come back through with the other tape but hmm, these are this is doing it uh, there's no ping whatsoever it's just it sounds lovely the mda keycap set from aka which they also offer as an option for 32 bucks it's a steal uh, the packaging is not my favorite in any means but it, i i'm just going to transfer them to my kit coat container so i won't have to worry about that anymore but they are they offer it for 32 dollars it normally sells on on aka site and um Amazon for $39.99 so you get eight bucks off there but it's it's a good option and it has all the keys because you're going to need the uh, well it does have it's not it's a saying bottom row but it does have the 1.5s on the right side of the space bar with the 1.25s over here so and it's the one sub 1.75 chef the single one you zero other than that um, you're going to be fine. I mean, if you really want everything to match, then you're going to be, you know, looking for these keys in the, the top row. But I've got to say, I think this sounds like one of my top five boards. And I mean, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm very impressed and I'm definitely, this is once I'm done filming, this is going and taking the place of my current daily driver because it's just really that nice so i'm curious to hear what you guys think about the sound test um and about the build all together so i'm gonna leave you guys with the stock sound test of this mons geek m2 1800 rocking the kale creams v1s and the Akko mda white on black builder block set and um and stock besides that i mean i didn't even do the plumber's mod to the stabilizers now the space bar it's a little it needs a little tuning it's not awful or anything but just just in case because you guys might hear it the rest of the stabilizers sound just fine so i'll probably take a look at that once i open her back up but for now guys enjoy the sound, stock sound test of this lovely hunk of aluminum keyboard this hunk of hunk of burn keyboard and until the next transmission Keep calm and keyboard on.